Yo, what's going on everyone? It's Brian and Jim here with Drink a Beer and Play a Game, and today we're going to review Spider-Man from 2018. Yes, this is a Patreon review request that came to us from Michael Soto, so Michael, thank you so much. Seriously, after some of the games, thank you. This was a breath of fresh air. Yep, it's also the first time that Brian and I have even played this game, and it was really critically acclaimed and loved, and I didn't have a PS4 at the time. So... Thank you, Michael. We truly appreciate it, bud. Yep, let's get into it. Originally released in 2018, this was developed by Insomniac Games and published by Sony. At its time of release, it was a PlayStation 4 exclusive though it did eventually get ported to the PlayStation 5 and Windows. This is really like one of the most acclaimed superhero games of all time. Like I remember people just talking up the hell out of it on its release. And uh, yeah, like we said, we didn't get around to it. So let's see if it lives up to the hype. All right, let's talk about graphics. And my God, does this game look beautiful. We know there can be snobs out there about a lot of things, but if you follow our channel, you know Jim and I, we appreciate something that looks good and this game delivers in every single little detail. Let's start with the overall character designs. As Peter Parker, you have a ton of different costumes to go through, and while they are aesthetic, some of these look just really insane, especially with the attention to detail. And speaking of details, looking at all the major bosses you're gonna fight in this game, they're all not just one-for-one -one recreations of a specific character model from a comic, but they put a little twist on all of them. And you know what? We really like the style they went with, especially for some of them like with Rhino and Shocker, they just look great. And that's all well and good, and you would expect the bosses in Spider-Man to look great, but where this game really shines for Jim and I is the environment itself. New York has never looked better, and in some of these moments, like when you're perched on top of the Empire State, or even in front of the Avengers Tower, and you just look out, First of all, this draw distance is ridiculous, and then on top of that, it's just kind of breathtaking. I don't know how else to say it. You get the ability to swing through the city, and if you stop on pretty much any given building, in a lot of cases, you can even see inside the apartments. There's little touches like that they didn't need to do, but add on top of that all the dynamic lighting with the daytime, nighttime, and even the rain effects. This game looks beautiful, it runs very smoothly, and when it comes to score, I gave it a 10, Jim gave it a 9. You're not going to get much better looking for an early PS4 game than this. So when it comes to beer, I'm going to give it one celebratory beer. Alright, the sound. Um, this is just a really good package. So the standout when it comes to the sound in this game is the voice acting. There is so much dialogue in this game. And I'm not even talking just the main story here. Just the city of New York just feels alive. Like, as you're swinging around the city, you just have people calling out the air, saying, Spider-Man, over here, or help me out, or just random nonsense and stuff like that. Even the little details with the sound effects, where when you're shooting your web out, if it hits a different surface, every once in a while it might sound a little different with what it hits, where you just hear that splat as it hits an enemy, or it goes, like, gushing with, like, your spider bombs and stuff like that. It's just... It's so cool that just the touches they put into here, the music is perfectly fine. You'll get that main theme stuck in your head, but it's not one of those like amazing tracks. It's just a perfect kind of background noise that you would expect from a superhero game or even a Marvel movie. And yeah, it's kind of weird where it's almost so good there isn't a lot to talk about. It could have just been done a little more with the music and maybe some of the sound effect variety, but outside of that, we don't have a ton of complaints, so we both gave it eights. And when it comes to beer, we're just going to give it one beer for just some of the best voice acting I've ever heard in a superhero video game. It's awesome. The Control. This game is everything you would want out of a Spider-Man game. And yes, we do love the original Spider-Man 2 from Xbox and PS2 days, but this one just takes everything you've learned from that game, adds in a little flair from Batman Arkham Asylum, and you just have damn near perfect control. Let's get the first thing out of the way, the web slinging. It is absolutely perfect. There's no other word to use for it because it's so seamless. You have a lot of different abilities to make yourself go a little faster, to dive, to go higher. And then if you want to earn a little bit of extra XP, you can do all these goofy tricks. 
it just feels fun. This is one of the few games Jim and I actually didn't bother using the fast travel that much because it was just that fun swinging around the city. And part of it is you like seeing if you can make a tighter turn or how far down you can dive. It just feels right. And then you got to move on to the combat. And I mentioned Arkham Asylum and Arkham City because the 360 fighting in this game has done so goddamn well. They've mapped out every major button and utilized everything across the PS4 or PS5 controller, depending on what you're using. So you have your basic attacks, you're going to have your ability to dodge, and then when you use the two sticks together, you have the suit power, you have your gadget wheel that's actually really intuitive and pulls up really fast, so you have the ability to slow down time while you're doing that. It's so easy to take on 20 guys and all of a sudden like you can decide, I'm going to use a power for him. <laughs> Brian's used to taking on 20 guys. <sighs> Knew I couldn't let that one slip. Good eye, Jeff. Let's slip in your mother. Touche. <laughs> Continue. <laughs> but this this game, honestly, like the combat, it just feels right. And we have to say, when I first played it, I thought it was going to be overwhelming with how many different things you could do. But honestly, you you can still turn your brain off and do a million things. And even though we've heard some people kind of complain about the quick time events, what's nice in this game is they're pretty few and far between. Yes, of course, like most PlayStation games, you're going to get them during some boss fights, but honestly, they weren't overly annoying like you have in a lot of other games. So, for when it comes to score, I gave it a 10, Jim gave it a 9. Once again, it's damn near perfect. I only had one tiny little nitpick. I just kind of wish the swinging, the web swinging was mapped to both of the R2 buttons, R2 and L2. So right hand with R2, left hand with L2, just for a little bit more immersion. But outside of that, yeah, it's basically perfect. Yeah. So when it comes to beer, honestly, I'm not even adding one. I don't expect anything more from this game, and I love what they did here. The gameplay. So this is one of those open world sandbox superhero games. And the sign of a good one is one where you just kind of can't put the controller down. There's so much content that is thrown into this game between the main mission, the more side missions, and then all the little tasks that you can do. So let's start with the main story, and it's good. And to get through it all, I mean, you're going to be distracted. But it probably takes a good 10 to 15 hours to get through the main story. Like, there's a beefy story here. It's filled with a nice little balance between more cinematic, story-driven missions where you don't do really all that much. And then there's more of the action scenes and then the super over-the-top boss fights. And some of the fights with Mr. Negative or Electro and Vulture, they just really stand out. And it does that cool thing where the final boss really just throws everything together. I won't spoil who that is, but if you play the game for like more than an hour, you'll kind of have an idea. So besides the main storyline, there are so many different side missions. And they're nice and varied, too. Like, there's ones where you just go around with your camera taking pictures of landmarks. There's ones where you go and you capture pigeons. There's ones where you go around and... Now, this actually leans into a part of a big complaint of the game is it can get really repetitive because there are about four to five different side mission varieties that are just go to spot, beat up a bunch of enemies, or go to spot, beat up a bunch of enemies, and do waves of enemies. And while they're cool, it really does get samey. But luckily, it just has a weird fun factor that will just keep you coming back and doing it all again and again. It has this nice balance where you just want to do everything in the game. And according to the fanatics out there, it's actually one of the easier games for a big AAA title to platinum. So I'm not one of these platinum chasers, but if that's your kind of thing, this is right there for you as well. Another cool thing is, like, eventually you unlock these Taskmaster missions, which are all a little bit different. And, like, some are about, you know, chasing a drone. Some are doing stealth missions. Some are about beating up hordes of bad guys. But it mixes in all the different gameplay styles, too. And there's a nice little surprise after you beat a certain amount of them or sc score high enough in some of them. And then, unfortunately, there are some downer missions, like the Harry Osborne missions where you go around the city and they has got these, like, research pods and you do stuff for that. And one, they all take a little bit too long and they're not really that interesting. Like, most of them just come down to fly through certain spots. Jim! What? 
You mean you didn't love that? I thought you'd love it because your obsession are. with the I goddamn rings. Right those I do love me some rings. It's basically, it's smoke rings, Jim. Superman rings, this is not, Brian. <laughs> you son of a bitch. It tried, it failed. And another downside of these Harry missions is the load times for these seem to take even okay. longer than the regular missions. The now, I gotta commend this game. As you're normally playing through and just digging around in the city, there's like no load times at all. The only time you have a load time is before you're loading up a story mission or like a bigger side mission. And that's pretty much it. Except for the Harry missions, which take a ridiculously long time to load. That's kind of annoying. But performance-wise, it's really good. And and I'll keep the powers and all short, because Brian already kind of talked about them. But there's so many different powers you unlock. There's so many different suits that you, you can unlock as you go through the story mode of the game. There's a portrait mode that you can dick around with, which is just taking really pretty cool pictures. And there's just a cool way where you can play how you want. Like, if you want to be more stealthy, you can be more stealthy. If you want to just go around and beat the crap out of thugs, you can go around and beat the crap out of thugs. In the main storyline mission, there is Mary Jane and Miles missions that are more stealth-based, and they have their little gimmicks to them, and honestly, they're another down part of the game, just because once you get to them and do them once, you're like, I get it. And you do each of them two to three times, and it's just kind of boring, and by the late game, you don't want to waste your time with that. And one of the main gameplay gimmicks that they added is the focus bar which you build up as you do combos, different moves, different more impactful moves, as you even do tricks as you're going around the city and web-slinging, as you complete missions, and you can use it to either refill your life at really critical times, or you can use it to unlock your superpowers for your suits. And there's so many different kinds of powers, it's just fun to unlock, as well as the different attributes that you can go around with your suit. Like, there's a couple dozen of them, so there's just so much to friggin' do in this game. It's, it's great. So when it comes to scores, Brian gave it a 9 and I gave it an 8. My biggest gripe is it kind of overstays its welcome by the end and you just wanted to be done. But it also has that thing where you don't want to put your controller down and even though you're sick of it, you still just keep going, oh, I'll just do one more side mission. And then three hours later, you're still doing friggin' missions. So it's great. What can I say? And when it comes to beer, I'm going to give it, I'll give it two beers because I'm feeling a little thirsty. One, for the repetitive nature of the game. And two, if you're a Spider-Man fanatic with the comics, you might have a problem with the pacing of the game because beating up just gang after gang of thugs, that's more like a Batman thing and not a Spider-Man thing. So if you're a nerd, there you go. The originality I can keep short because this must be the umpteenth Spider-Man game at this point, and you'd think you'd seen it all. And don't get me wrong, there are definitely elements we've seen from Spider-Man, and as I, I'll say one more time, the Batman games. But honestly, since Spider-Man 2, Spider-Man's never really had a good open world game, and it certainly has never had a game that has this many gadgets, suit powers, things that all combine together the way it do. And Jim pointed it out, it may sound odd, this is by far the most involved story you're going to get from any Spider-Man game. And we think the story was actually great. Even Jim, who hates stories, you can really get lost in this one. And what's nice is, spoiler ahead, they are setting up the next game. Now it's no secret that the next game's out, but they do a good job of really setting that up. And it's not something you always see in games. I know it's becoming more and more common, but this was one of the earlier ones I really feel like kind of set it up like a movie would. So when it comes to that, we felt this warranted enough to give it fives. It doesn't reinvent the wheel, but it didn't have to. And it showed us a few new things that we actually really like to see. So when it comes to beer, I'm just going to add one beer just because uh, I don't need a game to completely make everything new just to find it enjoyable. The replayability. All right, I can keep this short because we have gone long enough about this game. But guess what? There is a ton of content. There is a ridiculous amount of content. Between all the side missions, between all the little tasks you can do between all the five boroughs of New York, between the long main story, between the achievements you can go for, between just dicking Another around camera. in the city and Gotta doing portrait cat. mode, there's just a lot here. And honestly, for a game with no multiplayer component at all, this is still going to get like one of the highest replayability scores that we've given a game, really, because there's just so much to do. So we both gave it eights. And when it comes to beer, I'll just have one sad beer, just because... I don't know, some kind of time trial multiplayer thing would have been nice if they threw in. Insomniac did it with Sunset Overdrive, so it's kind of weird it's not in this one. Overall, as you can tell, we absolutely love this game. It was almost annoying how good it was, because Jim and I, the joke was, like, you'd play it and say, I'm just going to focus on the main story so I can get through it. And then you find yourself, well, I'll swing, because that's only, you know, 
a mile away or whatever it was. It's it's really great. Yeah, it's weird because for a game that's as repetitive as it is, and there are times where you're just feeling like, all right, enough. You still just keep coming back to it. Like, it's really well done. Insomniac knows how to do a friggin' sandbox game. It's It lives up to the hype if you haven't played it. And another good thing is it is super cheap at this point. Like, you can get a PS4 copy for 5 bucks at GameStop at this point. So, if you're a pro member, use your free 5 bucks a month and get it for, like, you know, 30 cents after tax. Yeah. Or if you're on the PlayStation whatever members benefit thing, it's one of their free games. It's one that you really shouldn't pass up. And when it came to scores, Jim and I, we both gave it nines. And this may be our highest rated Patreon reviewed game to date. I think so. It's it's really good. Yeah. Because when we combine all of our scores, it comes out to an 8.7, which for us, that might as well be a damn near 10. Yeah, that's, that's <laughs> really high for us. <laughs> so, yeah. Michael, we really, really want to say thank you. This was an excellent title, and this is one I would even go back and I'd want 100% anything I might have missed, and it definitely made me want to play the next one, Miles Morales, because... Yeah, Insomniac, you know what you're doing with these games. They sure do. So once again, thank you to everyone out there for the support. Thank you, Michael, for the suggestion. If you would like to have your own video game review request with us, head on over to our Patreon, check out our tiers. And yeah, until next time, guys. Cheers. Cheers, guys. When it comes to beer pairing, you know I had to go with a special beer for such a great game. So I decided to go to Queens, New York, which is where Spider-Man hails from, and go with the Evil Twin Brewing's Retro Series Soft DK. This is an American Imperial Stout that comes in at 10.4%, because such a big game deserves a big beer. This is not one you're going to crush, you're going to sip and enjoy as you go from side mission to side mission. So pick up a four pack of these bad boys, sit back, and enjoy one of the best superhero games you can play. But remember to drink your beers and play your games responsibly.